Welcome to another fireside chat with the experts. I'm here again with uh, Dr. Bill Cardoso, Dr. Glenn Thomas. Uh, today we're going to be talking about counterfeits. Uh, I know we've hit this subject a couple of times. It's really a broad topic, right? Um, and an important one because it does have a lot of consequences um, in many, many different industries. So, um, um, Bill, why don't you start? Give us a little background in creative electrons with uh, creative electrons experience with counterfeits, um, where we've helped people out and that kind of thing. Overview for us. Yeah, so we've been we've been dealing with uh, you know applications, uh, counterfeit kind of detection applications using X-ray technology for uh, a good part of the last decade. Right, it's, it's been uh, it's been uh, yeah almost ten years now. And uh, we started uh, in the early days looking for counterfeit components, right? So the um, the business model there um, at the time there was a lot of uh, a lot of counterfeit components coming from overseas, uh, from um, they, they were being produced by. Basically, recycling or they're pulling components from old boards or old uh, old uh, uh, you know PCBs that the electronics that we disposed uh, went overseas and they would just pull components from those boards, right. uh, clean them, refinish them, straight the leads, and then mark whatever component you're looking for. Right? It doesn't matter the guts of the component; it would just mark on the outside. <laughs> with the part number that you're looking for. And of course, when you put in your board, it's not what it's supposed to be and you have, you have disastrous consequences. So we developed uh, not only, you know, the machines, but also software uh, to look for that. And uh, over the years, we've noticed that the, 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 these criminals, they got more sophisticated, right? So in the past, uh, the counterfeits were fairly, I don't want to say they were gross, but they were less sophisticated in the sense that you could, for the most part, you could look, you know, and with a microscope, you could tell that was a fake, right? You could see um, uh, sanding marks on top of the component. You can see the refinishing that was done. And in some cases, you can usually see dripping of the uh, epoxy, the, the, you know, the black topping that they, would, they did. So it was fairly straightforward uh, to, uh, you know, apply a kind of detection methodology to find a good chunk of these uh, fake components and get, them, get rid of them and clean up the supply chain. And... Uh, We've noticed is that you know over the years that they you know as we develop technology to or methods to find counterfeits, they find ways to get around those technologies uh, to the point where today uh, you know the X-ray inspection is is really a requirement. You can't have a proper a counterfeit mitigation uh, strategy and uh, and policy in your company if you don't have an X-ray machine to look at the insides. And it's not only, and, and people think that when you look at uh, components that you're looking at specifically, uh, you know, comparing to a golden sample, right? So if, if it doesn't match perfectly to what uh, a reference component looks like, then it's kind of fit. That's definitely a very powerful way to do it, right? Not only comparing to a reference component, but also uh, doing lot um uh, homogeneity, so make sure all, the whole lot of, let's say if you have a reel of a thousand, a thousand components, make sure that every single component that reel looks exactly the same. And if they don't, it's a suspect counterfeit. But we also have a whole range of other things, other me methods you can apply to the component uh, that give you a pretty good indication if it's a good component or, or a fake. Um, a lot of these methods we go over, uh, you know, we're discussing application with our, uh, uh, our partners or customers, and um, we don't uh, publish all of them, right? We keep a, a few of them uh, to ourselves, but 
Uh, one, uh, one example you can do, for example, is um, if you look at the X-ray of a component and um, what you're going to see is the you know, lead frame, the bare die, uh, and water bones, for the most part, connecting that bare die to the leads of the component. And by comparing the wire, uh, uh, the wire bone diagram to the component uh, uh, details, uh, which you can find in the data sheet of the component, you can make some very powerful um, uh, assertions, right? So, for example, you can assess uh, if you see wire bones going to uh, the corner of the component, you can see that there are two, three, or four wire bones from one pad of the bare die to a specific lead, that's very likely a power connection, right? A VCC, right. because you put multiple wire bones to minimize uh, the impedance of that uh, connection. So you're pretty sure that's a VCC connection. If you look at the data sheet and that pin is in reality a bus pin or a, a, a IO connection, you know, something doesn't match. And then you keep yeah. looking around the wire bone diagram and you can, you see wire bones going to, um, uh, from the lead, you know, from the pin to the lead frame itself, right? Which is a uh, ground connection because the back of the bare die is uh, usually grounded. And then you look at your data sheet and you see that it's, that pin is supposed to be a control pin, which makes no sense to be grounded. So by doing, um, uh, an analysis, which doesn't, it's not complicated. It takes, you know, uh, a little time. But making that uh, analysis, you can quickly figure out if that component is legit or not. So we got, you know, over the years, we got a lot of experience looking at components and looking for things that look different and then trying to understand what can you do if you don't have a reference, right? Uh, and because of that, we ended up finding other applications for extra inspection to find counterfeit components. It turns out there's a lot of applications out there of things that you can look for an x-ray and figure out if they look the same or if they look the same. Or more importantly, you can assess the construction of the object, right? If it makes sense, if it's a legit construction uh, or not. So at this point, I don't remember what the question was anymore. So <laughs> I guess for a quick inter overview, not a 10 minute. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, an overview, yes. So that, that is, that's the overview. <laughs> a lot of those principles that we've learned in electronics really applies to basically anything that wants to be counterfeited, right? Because mm -hmm. initially when people come to counterfeit something, they don't do a great job. Uh, um, you know, but it's, it's good enough. They start selling some stuff. People start getting aware of it and they're, Usually the first pass is visual, right? Yeah. So like you were saying on the components, you're looking for the markings as the same kind of ink. Can I see epoxy drips? So there's sand scratches on all that's visual. You don't need x-ray for any of that. Um, but as the counterfeiters, you know, make some money, get more sophisticated and progress, you can't do it visually. And that's not just components, right? We've hit we've we've talked to a lot of industries that have been fighting counterfeits visually. And now we're coming to a point where maybe that's not quite good enough. Yeah, we have, uh, I have a good example, uh, golf balls. Even golf balls are kind of fit, right? We, yeah. we saw one box of golf balls that, uh, high-end golf balls, of course, you know, um, not the $5 a box, we're talking about like 50 bucks a box of, uh, of, uh, of a dozen. And, from the outside, the golf balls all look pretty much the same, same markings, same color. And then we did an x-ray and we can see that some of them were dual cores, some of them are single cores. They're all mixed up, right? So you could tell there's probably someone buying basically an assorted variety, maybe, you know, a, a range used golf balls, cleaning them up applying the logo of the brand that they were selling, putting in a nice box and passing them off as counterfeit. And uh, without an X-ray, you can't really tell, right? Um, unless you go to 
you know, when you go to the golf course and you, you, you know, you're, you're not hitting the balls right because it's not, not the right ball anyway. In other words, every time I have a problem with my golf swing, I know I'm using the wrong counterfeit ball. You know, it's absolutely. Yeah. It's the like only reason. It's, it's uh, the problem with the ball. It's not, yeah. never my fault. <laughs> Maybe the club. Exactly. <laughs> Which the clubs can be counterfeit as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, pretty much anything, right? Um, a lot of um, um, a lot of companies produce product, um, and they destroy the lower quality stuff, or they sell the lower quality as a lower quality item, um, but they can get rebranded by yeah. counterfeiters. Right. right. Yeah. So, it, this, go ahead. No, in one area that this gets really dangerous is um, uh, medical devices, right? When they start kind of feeding or modifying um, medical devices, um, um, you know, to pass them on as something else. And that's, um, that's, that, that's a real concern, right? That's when lives are at stake. And that's where yeah. you have to be very careful that you are using the right thing and you're using what you're supposed to be using. Yeah. All the way to fashion, right? Where you can use uh, x ray inspection to find out if the, you know, $50,000 bag you're buying is a legit bag or not. And again, counterfeiters are fantastic at figuring out how to fake the outside of the, of the bag or shoe, but the internals are very hard to counterfeit, right? To the point where if you perfectly kind of fit the internals and the external, you made the real item, right? <laughs> you know, at some point. <laughs> you're almost there, right? If you're so perfect, you, you make exactly the same item, it's the same item. So, uh, but that's another area with, where you'd be very successful at finding counterfeits is uh, in the fashion industry. Yeah. It, it, that's one industry where uh, the counterfeiting criminals you know, run rampant. I mean, there's so much fake stuff out there. Yeah. And the reason is because they cost a lot of money, right? A $50,000 bag, we're not exaggerating. It's a $50,000 bag. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, a, it's an industry where even the fakes are worth money, even if you know it's a fake, right? If it's yeah. a $50,000 bag, a good fake might be worth 800 bucks, right? Yeah, some of the fake stuff we've seen is um, quality, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a good quality bag. If it didn't say it was by this brand that it's not actually by, they're making a decent bag. That's exactly. Um, I've learned a lot in dealing with that industry. I did, definitely did not know before. But, um, you know, shoes, you look, you're looking at it with an x-ray, you can quickly tell if they're using staples or they're using nails. Yeah. Right? The cobbler put it together with, uh, with nails, or is it just a machine throwing a bunch of staples in it to keep it together? Um, you know, how much metal is in the, the heel to keep it supporting the, the weight properly and distributing it versus just a little stick, mo mo mostly plastic things you can't tell visually, right? Yeah. But um, with an x ray, it's super quick. I think that's, that's one of the big things is, it, is it's really fast, right? You get to the meat of the argument really quick with an x-ray yeah and the x-ray gives you um, an absolute reference of the product yeah it can have some uh, lineage with the, the product if it's um sold at another time you could actually go back and verify that it is indeed the same bag right uh yeah. so the it gives you the ability to um to fingerprint the product right so in the fingerprinting, in some cases, with even with, with the electronics and some of the electronic components for critical applications is, uh, is key, right, for some of the counterfeits and some of the more nefarious counterfeits that are for um, uh, infrastructure and that sort of uh, you know, high security applications. So the ability to take those images that you've captured and save them in an archive and reference them later.
or use them for reference images at a future point is pretty important. And that's yeah. one of our strong points is the database that we have. Which brings me also to that, um, to the reverse logistics application, right, uh, Glenn? This one you, you work with a lot with your customers. Absolutely. The, um, the return of fraud good of fraudulent goods to in e-commerce is huge. Uh, it's it's mostly um, under the radar, right? Uh, you don't see a lot of articles about it. You don't see a lot of um, headlines, but it, it's a huge implication. Um, there's a lot of different reasons for it, but mostly it's for profit, right? Mm -hmm. Real quick and simple. Um, it. It's two prong. It's actually three prongs. It's more like a spider web. Yeah. Right? You don't have a single point of counterfeit. If you get a guy that's really good at doing purses or bags or shoes, that's a single point. He's only pump pumping out a few, right? And it's more organized. It's a larger operation. They have a lot of money involved. But when you're looking at e-commerce fraud and e-commerce counterfeits, it could be as simple as you took a uh, an iPhone 12 out of the box and put an iPhone 4 in place and returned it for the money, right? Yeah. So it, I, the e-commerce fraud and e-commerce counterfeiting can go uh, from the basic level of a single person stealing $1,000 up to uh, organized crime rings that are uh, producing product that looks similar to an iPhone 12 and putting it back in the box and returning it for thousand dollars. Right. You know, it's a good point. Never thought about that. It's uh it's a, it's a very powerful point you made. The, this other counterfeit uh, actors that we discuss all the time, <clears throat> they are, they require a certain level of sophistication and and, um, and equipment, right? I mean, if you want to make a fake component, I don't care how bad the component is going to look, but you need to polish the top of the component. I mean, there's a lot of things you have to do to come across as, you know, reasonable that somebody's going to accept as a fake. But you, you bring up a really good point The uh, for reverse logistics, right, for e-commerce, the barrier of entry is zero. Bro, Anyone can do it. Anyone. Pick up out of the yard, right? Anyone, exactly. I mean, you can, you can go to eBay and buy some of those uh, fake phones, right? You can buy them for 10 bucks and you return a $1,200 phone, iPhone that you just bought and then you sell the iPhone somewhere else. So you just made 1200 bucks out of nowhere, right? Right, yeah. But it's interesting. It's a very, I never, it, and that generates this distributed problem, right? Where it's basically you can't, for counterfeit of uh, luxury bags, for example, uh, I don't know, Louis Vuitton, Fendi, they can go after the manufacturers of these things in overseas and crack them down, right? Oh, you're using my brand and can't do that anymore. For e commerce, you, it's like whack-a-mole, right? You get one here, 30 others showed up there, and you, you just there's no end. So you do have to bring protection to the other side, right? So enforcement, you have to do it, but it's incredibly hard because you're going to be basically fighting them forever. So you have to bring protection to the inside to avoid the influx of those fake parts. Right. Interesting. Right. So it's a huge market. Um it's got a, there's a huge liability there for, for everyone involved, right? Not only is it a money issue, but it's also a, um, yeah. a reputation, uh, customer service. Uh, you know, there's, it's a huge, I think it's actually probably larger than the component manufacturing or, you know, uh, the e-commerce has the potential to be much larger than any oh. counter just based on the fact that, uh, you know, someone, with less than perfect intentions can commit this type of crime without actually, uh, you know, being caught. It's a pretty straightforward and simple, right? 
Yeah, and, and like you, and like we discussed, right? It's 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 a level of awareness, right? The maturity of the industry. I mean, you can you can the for a for a criminal, right? The ROI for an iPhone is much bigger than a reel of components, right? Yeah. Right, because the reel of components. I mean, you make twelve hundred bucks in one reel, right? It's not just any components, right? It's gonna be right. an act. It's not a reel of capacitors or resistors, right? It's gonna be an active component. It's gonna be a memory or processor or you know an older amplifier that can justify commanding twelve hundred bucks. Then you have to find a person looking for that component, right? And most of the people willing to pay 1200 bucks for a reel of components, they have a, some level of awareness that counterfeits are out there. So now you have to, now you can't just be a dude in a garage doing it, right? Because no one's going to buy 1200 bucks of components out of you, hopefully, right? Hopefully. This day and age, no one's going to do that. But, but for e commerce, if you have 10 iPhones, it's $12,000. Right. And the, the problem is that um, the protections that companies have had in place for years are easily um, bypassed based on the um, same machine vision. Yeah, it looks like it. It's got the same markings. The labeling is perfect. So the machine vision would look at it and say, yeah, it's fine. And then uh, let's do weight checking, right? We check the weight when it went out. We'll check the weight when it comes back. Exactly. So and uh, some of your more sophisticated um, you know, thieves, for lack of a better term, uh, would match the weight perfectly, right? Uh, it's yeah. easy with uh, steel bar or lead strips, uh, you know? So it's uh, the conventional way of checking incoming goods like that and comparing them to the weight and to the vision image of the outgoing goods uh, is is some major problems. The only way to look at it is with X-ray. Yeah, I think the, the whoever invented Glenn those uh, uh, dummy phones you see at stores when you go to Walmart, Target, you know, they have those dummy phones so they don't put the real stuff out there because people are stealing the real stuff, right? So whoever invented, oh, let's make some dummy phones, right? The dummy stuff. It looks exactly like the real stuff, even weighs the same, but it's dummy. Like, so you just created a market, right? You can go to eBay or any other web, other websites, and you can find these things, right? And they look exactly like the real stuff, but they're fake, they're empty inside. Created the hammer that's going to hit you in the head next month. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And then, you, then as you said, right, you, you, you open the box, because you can buy the box as well, right? Yeah. Empty box. You, you, you buy an empty box. You open the box, you look like, oh. You no, know, if you have a person, right, looking at this stuff. Oh, because like you're saying, the way is the same. Now, you don't have the time to be charging every device, right? So you don't know if the thing is out of charge, right? Or empty inside. You don't know. Right. So you just put it back on the shelf. And I think the reputation thing you're talking about is really important because it's, can you imagine shipping somebody a fake device? Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's disastrous. So either you take the time to verify every device you, you get back, right? Which is going to take a lot of time and money. Or, and then you have to delay the refunds to people who return stuff for you, but then they have to delay for everybody, right? right? Which basically is a huge hit in that relationship you have with e-commerce uh, companies where they weigh heavily in favor of the consumer, right? You return right. stuff, same day or next day, you have your money back. And that's the expectation, right? Why? Because you don't want to create a delay which, you're going to, which will in turn incentivize people to go to the store instead of going to you, to an e-commerce, right? right? So you know all these different things were created to mimic that physical relationship the customer has with the store, but the volumes we have today, right? 
are so huge that unless you have an actually automated gate, right, to make sure those things don't enter the supply chain, they stop right there when you get the device, x-ray, oh, this is a dummy device, reject, don't do the refund and cancel that person's account, right? Right. And then you look at the, um, the labor cost of sorting all of that uh, mm -hmm. suspect material. Every uh, electronic component you get back with a value of, say, over $1,000, you would quarantine. Yeah. And to have someone open up the box, take a look at it, uh, make us an informed judgment, which means you have to train them to a certain degree, yeah. you know, able to make that judgment. And then uh, you know, you, you've got a building dedicated to, and a warehouse dedicated to suspect quarantine com components and products. And uh, what do you do with those, right? Uh, you, exactly. you have um, semi-trained or fairly well-trained employees on top of that and that's their full-time job so you're spending five million dollars a year in one facility to quarantine suspect product yeah but right there you already screwed up the uh, the supply chain right right so now i can't return things to any warehouse now i have to return item x always right. to that specific warehouse right yeah exactly unless you're going to mimic that infrastructure in every warehouse you have, which is incredibly expensive, right? Right. And on well, like that, I mean, you have artificial intelligence, for example, where you can create a database of what an iPhone 12 actually looks like. So when you get that device back, you take a quick x-ray, you AI compares, so you don't need an operator in the loop, right? Just do a quick comparison. Say, hey, this doesn't look an iPhone 12. This is an iPhone 4 that somebody's returning. And right away rejected without any human intervention, right? Automatically done, barcode scan and all this stuff can quickly uh, help you assess those things uh, automatically. So it's a no brain. Another advantage is at that point, you start a um, paper chain with the product, right? Since you've barcode scanned it, you, have, you know who, the, who, who sent the product, what their account number is, you can look up all of the data on how many returns they've made in the last, say, six months, three months since their account was open. Uh, you can take a visual image of that. You can take an x-ray image of that product and um, a comparison image of what it should look like. And yeah. you create a ticket that travels with that. Mm. Uh, and when it goes into quarantine, it goes to your fraud protection uh, teams. Uh, they now have some documentation that they can work with. And you can take that data and you can start building a pretty strong database and get an idea that maybe in one part of the world, we're getting an uptick in, in this. And it may be an organized crime. Exactly. Yeah. So you can, <clears throat> with electrical like x-ray as well, you don't have to open the package, right? So you, exactly. can, yeah. you can properly assert the custody, right, of that item. It, the package has received bought from the, the customer, right? So it's not like you open and change something. It's a sealed package from the customer. You x-ray, and you can assess if it's the real device or not. Right. And a side note, now everyone knows and can understand when they're looking on eBay and they're looking for an iPhone 12, when they see an iPhone 12 box for 50 bucks, they know what that box is for now, right? Very good point. A lot of people see that and they're like, who would buy a box? Who would buy a box? Makes no sense. Who's going to buy a legit yeah. box for 50 bucks? Exactly. Somebody who's going to turn that 50 bucks box into 1200 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, uh, you know, for an FYI, that's why they sell iPhone boxes on eBay. Very right? good point. Very good point. Although we're not encouraging you to go out and buy empty boxes and return them. Not in it. <laughs> or sell them, right? Yeah. But we can detect them. That's right. You yes. can't detect them. Absolutely. Fact, well, you're more likely to get caught nowadays than you were uh, a year ago, right? Absolutely. If it's up to us, yes. All right. Well, gentlemen, we've come to the end of our time. I appreciate it. Um, always good talking to you, too. And I'll see you again in two weeks. Thanks so much, David. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Right. Have a good afternoon.